Here it is again. Hello, this is Buona from Buona.tv, and today I'm answering another yet another question from Promzy on YouTube. P R O M Z Y from YouTube, and he or she wrote me an email asking me. He wrote it at help at Buona.tv. Um, thank you for your great work, and I love your Q and A videos. I have a question that I would love you to answer for me. Please, yes, please in all caps. Please, please. He wants to know, or she wants to know, what is overclocking? What is overclocking? What good does it do for your PC or laptop, and how do you do it? All right, that's a loaded question. So this loaded question, man, Promzy. What I'll try to do is I will try my best to keep it as general as possible because this can be very low level and um, it's not a universal method of how to overclock every almost just about every motherboard has its own little nuances so uh, it's not a universal thing so first off let me tell you what overclocking is it's, it's the name of it kind of implies what it is you are overclocking a chip or a processor you are increasing the clock speed is what it's called from beyond what it was originally intended for so you're overclocking it it's, it's, it's at a certain clock speed you're overclocking you can almost think of it as as, as a turbo charger for your engine you, you're you're attaching a turbo charger so you can get more horsepower out of your engine than it was originally designed for that's that's kind of the same analogy with overclocking you are essentially getting as much juice out of that processor as possible and in some cases you go over the limit so let me give you a a, a a wikipedia definition this is probably what you've already read but I'll, I'll say it again it says overclocking is a process of running a computer component at a higher clock rate more clocks cycles per second than it was designed for or was specific or specified by the manufacturer and that's an important part of it usually practiced by enthusiasts seeking an increase in the performance of their computers now that little that little part they put in there is important that you could either overclock it more than what it was designed for or what was specified by the manufacturer back in the day we had there was a processor that Intel made called the Celeron and it was a Celeron I think it was a Celeron 300 uh, processor to this day, I don't think that there was any processor that was more overclockable than that processor. I overclocked it, my friends overclocked it, it was dirt cheap, and you could get so much performance out of it, because what Intel did is that they sold a processor that was specified at a certain rate, but it was made to so where you could actually get more out of it. Now, that's overclocking, you increase speeds, and you go beyond what's either designed or what is uh, specified. Now with overclocking, there are issues. Um, number one, you can have stability issues. If you overclock a processor the wrong way, your computer can crash. You can either have OS crashes or you can have hardware crashes. And this generally is uh, a function of cooling. If you've ever seen a, a microprocessor or a CPU, you always know that it has thermal paste, it has a heat sink, and it has a fan. This is all on there to keep the thing cool. Cooling is a big component of microprocessors so when you overclock cooling has to be considered you have to have a decent fan most adamant overclockers will even use liquid cooling they'll even use you know all kinds of stuff these super high rated heat sinks these super high rated fans multiple case fans they'll even leave the case open in some cases um, it, it's crazy because cooling will help you achieve higher clock speeds now how you do it this is where I'm kinda of, I don't know how to answer that but generally when you overclock what you do is that you go into the motherboards BIOS and you specify and this is for CPUs this is for processors you specify a certain clock speed alright and I'm looking at a screenshot here on on uh, Wikipedia it has an external clock and it has a frequency basically you design a clock or you specify a clock speed and you couple that with a multiplier alright so say for example you have a 1.2 gigahertz processor in that case a motherboard supplier may say okay the clock is 400 megahertz and the multiplier is 3 okay 
So it's three times 400, 1200 megahertz, and you got 1.2 gigahertz processor. That's how you do it. So what people do is that they break the rules. They say, okay, this processor has you know, a certain clock. I'm going to go with a higher multiplier. I'm going to go higher. And you'll get more out of the chip, and there's a possible uh, risk to overheat it. Also, with overclocking, you can overclock video cards. Video cards, some of them come with software where you can specify clock multipliers and clock speeds and go beyond what it was designed or specified for, but stability and cooling all come into play. I hope I kept that as general as possible. Um, that's overclocking in a nutshell. There's a lot more to it. I highly suggest you go to a bunch of experts who have done this. Like I said, it's been a while since I've done it. Um, <laughs> it, but the principles are generally the same. It's all about overclocking, clock speeds, multipliers, cooling, and stability, and they all play together. All right. Um, I hope I answered the question, Promzy from YouTube. YouTube, hi YouTube from Promzy. Promzy from YouTube. That's overclocking, and uh, good luck. That's all I can say. Uh, or uh, I hope you do well with it. I hope you're fortunate with it, because you know you can't fry your chips. You can fry your processors if you go too high of clock speed. Don't have a lot of cooling. You can have hardware failure, which means you're returning it. So be very, very careful. All right, this is one from one.tv. That's overclocking. That's overclocking. Take care.